This photo is 288 megapixels. That is 18,000 pixels by 16,000 pixels. If you were comparing this with photos from the Canon R5, this photo has over five times the resolution. I want to talk about super high resolution photography and why you would ever need photos this big. And also, how do you create them? Let's go ahead and hop in. What's up guys, I'm Chris Reisner, product photographer and owner of Avahi Creative Studio. And whenever I'm not working on client work, I've been working on this art exhibit that I want to put together called Bakery. Now as part of this art exhibit, I went down this rabbit hole of trying to figure out how to create the highest resolution photos possible. My overall goal is that I want to be able to blow these photos up to like life size, like human size, like six foot by six foot wide photos and have them in incredible detail even though they're huge. But to be able to do that, that requires a lot of resolution. Honestly, I don't even know if this 288 megapixel photo is going to be enough. Depending on your technical knowledge of photography, you might be wondering why I didn't just use film. And if you have no technical knowledge of photography, you're probably wondering why film is involved with this at all. But to understand why film is involved, you need to understand how pictures are made with a digital camera. Digital cameras record images using pixels of color. So if you're looking at a photo and it's real like splotchy and it's low resolution, that's because you're seeing the actual pixels that make up the image. Film on the other hand doesn't use pixels, it uses light. Film is made up of microscopically small light sensitive silver halide crystals. I had to read that right off the page because I, I couldn't say it. But essentially what I'm saying is with film photography, whenever you open up the camera shutter, it exposes the film to the light and that light changes the film at a microscopic level. So it, it doesn't have resolutions the same way that digital cameras do. Now, while you can blow an image up as big as you want with film, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to have a lot of detail, but because you're not using pixels, it's not gonna give that same low resolution look. So even though you could blow up a 35 millimeter piece of film as big as you wanted, this is why medium format film is still relevant. You're going to get a lot more detail because you're able to catch a lot more detail directly on the film. So after I've explained all of that, you're probably thinking that medium format film probably would have been the way to go. And the reason why I didn't use medium format film is because one, film is really expensive right now. Two, it's hard to shoot with because you don't know what you've shot until it's over. Three, some of these situations that I'm creating for this are going to be hard to recreate multiple times. So I might only have one shot at it and I know that with a digital camera, I'm going to be able to get that. And four, stylistically, my style and the style that I want this show to be in, it just doesn't translate to film very well. I think film photography Photography is very beautiful in its own right, but it's not it's not as crisp as digital photography. And that's kind of the style that I like. I like the crispness of digital photography and I like those very like true to life tones. OK, so we're settled on digital, but how do we create high resolution, highly detailed photos? I printed these photos so I could test out the size and see how it worked out. But it also makes a really good visual for how I shot these photos. Essentially, you're just lining up a whole bunch of images, which allows you to make a bigger picture. After I set up the shot and had it exactly how I wanted it, I moved the camera as close as I could using a macro lens. This allowed me to get a lot more detail in each photo. Then I shot nine different photos of the donut going in a Z pattern to get all of the donut. Using a geared tripod head allowed me to get very precise movements, but you're able to do it with pretty much any head. You just wanna make sure that you're overlapping the images slightly so that it's easier for you to line them up in Photoshop. Once I had all nine photos, I was able to bring them into Photoshop and combine them as if they were a panorama. Since each image is about 24 megapixels, if you put those all together, you're getting about 140 megapixel picture. However, However, I wasn't trying to get a lot of detail. I was trying to get the absolute most detail that I could get out of my camera. So after I combined them all into Photoshop, I exported them as a TIFF and then brought them into Lightroom. Lightroom has a new function called AI Enhance, which allows you to increase the resolution even further. I wasn't sure how well it would work or even if my computer could actually manage it. After about 20 minutes of waiting, I was able to get one single photo of the donut exported. 
and whenever I checked the details, I saw that it was a 288 megapixel photo. So just to put that in perspective for you, that means that I could print this at 300 pixels per inch at 60 inches wide. As I develop this series even further, I plan on giving you a lot more information, but I wanted to show you the science behind how I was creating these massive photos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week.